Hello, this is Malcolm Bowden. I'd like to talk to you about the decrease in the speed of light. But first of all, a simple word of explanation. When physicists use the speed of light in their formula, they use a small c as a symbol. Now, the speed of light has decreased over the years, and this could be called c decay. And that has been shortened even further to the capital letters C, D, K. That's a shorthand for the decrease in the speed of light. So when I use the phrase C, D, K, you'll know that I'm talking about the decrease in the speed of light. Now, Barry Setterfield, who was in Australia at the time, collected a number of uh, measurements of the speed of light over the last 300 years. And when you plot these on a graph, it shows quite clearly, very clearly indeed, that the speed of light has been decreasing over the years until it virtually uh, flattened out at the, in the 1960s. Setterfield, from various other factors, reckoned that at the time of creation in 6,000 six years ago, the speed of light could have been anything from 10 to the 7th to 10 to the 11th power faster than it is today. So it would be, have been very, very much faster in the past. And in fact, an independent Russian physicist and astronomer also came to the conclusion that the speed of light had been 10 to the 10th power faster than today, which is in, within the range that Setterfield has given. Now the question has been raised that if the speed of light speeded up the radioactivity as it does do because there is a direct relationship between the speed of light and radioactivity, a very direct relationship, that if the radioactivity was also very, very much faster, wouldn't that have overheated everything and sort of Adam would have been killed from the radiation? Setterfield has investigated this and has found that there is no more radiation that would affect Adam than there is today. It has also been suggested that altering the speed of light would affect many other constants and Setterfield has checked this out and there would have been changes in sun and this has been recorded. Also the formula E equals mc squared Surely if C was much faster, then all the energy and the mass would be changing, much, much different to what we have today. But again, Setterfield has investigated that, and found that when you look at the atomic formula carefully, there is no change at all. And incidentally, E equals mc squared was not discovered by Einstein. It was well known long before he made that statement. So what are the results of the high speed of light? Well, first of all, one of the main things is the, radi the radioactive dating. When rocks have a small percentage of radioactive material in them, that radioactive material decays and throws off a daughter element. And by looking at the ratio between the original amount and the daughter element, scientists say that they can get an idea of the age of the rock. However, that's using today's measurements of the rate of decay. If it was very, very much faster in the past, it would throw off the daughter element very rapidly, and according to today's standard, it would appear to age very, very rapidly indeed. And so we can take the millions of years that the evolutionist uh, has his time scale on and simply apply a correcting factor of the decrease in the speed of light and find that these billions of years are quickly reduced down to a few thousand years. And incidentally, those who have uh, re rejected the evidence for CDK have run into enormous problems in trying to overcome the billions of years that the evolutionist presents on his time charts. People will also ask, how can we see lights that are millions of light years away 
and yet you're saying that we've only been here for 6,000 years? Well, CDK answers that very simply. Because when the speed of light was very, very much faster, the light would travel these enormous distances at very, very high speed. And Adam would quite quickly see the nearby stars, and perhaps gradually he would see galaxies also. So that is another point that is answered, that is answered by the decrease in the speed of light. Another point is the well-known redshift of the galaxies as they are said to be rushing away from us. But that is what we are seeing is not redshifted light because of the speed that they are moving away from us, but because the light is coming to us from starlight that was emitted many years ago when the speed of light was much higher. As the speed of light decreased, it made the light shift to the red end of the spectrum. One of the things that the CDK affects are the transport constants. And that alters many, many things. For the start, it affects the diffusion rates of the electrons um, and atoms and diffusion and viscosity. Diffusion is much quicker and viscosity is much lower. This has many repercussions. For example, pterosaurs can fly in the air because the viscosity is very much lower then than it would be today. Similarly, with viscosity low, the small insects breathe through tiny tubes and with, if there was a long tube then when the speed of light was higher and the viscosity was lower, the air could get into those insects because that's the way they breathe. As the speed of light decreased, the viscosity became higher and they died out, some of the big, animal, big insects. But yet we can find in the uh, geological strata uh, cockroaches that are one foot long and uh, dragonflies that are 30 inches wingspan. Big insects could live in the past because of the lower viscosity due to CDK. Similarly, the emission of heat was much quicker and therefore rocks could cool much more quickly. Uh, the electron movement would be higher and that means that man could think much quickly, much more quickly and Adam would uh, display very very high intelligence as his brain, the electrons in his brain could move that much quicker at the time when the speed of light was faster. Another ramification from CDK is regarding the decrease in viscosity. This would have made it much more easy for the blood to throw, flow through the arteries and capillaries um, and therefore it would put much less pressure upon the heart. Therefore, in the early years, with a lower viscosity, the heart would be much more able to pump the blood around the uh, human body. And this is perhaps one reason why the patriarchs could live so much longer than we, almost 900 years before the time of the flood. But at the flood, when the water vapour canopy collapsed, dangerous cosmic radiation started to come in and damage all life, human life in, as well. And therefore now the damage is so great that we are not allowed to marry someone who is a near relative. We must marry somebody who is genetically more distant from us. Because if we do marry somebody close to us as a close relation, they will have much the same sort of genetic damage that we have. And therefore our offspring may have a double dose of this damaged genetic um, material in our bodies. And therefore suffer some deficiency of some sort. And so there are many reasons that the decrease in the speed of light when the speed of light was much faster, that all sorts of things were very much uh, better for a human race and for life in general. Many, many things were far better. And so you see that the decrease in the speed of light explains many, many things that support the creation understanding of this world. I hope you found that interesting. Thank you for listening.